Engineer Matt here. You might remember me from a few videos back, the KYET 1170 AM Stereo Transmitter Tour. On today's episode, we will be heading up to KGMN FM 100.1 Super Country to diagnose a faulty tube transmitter and install a new solid state one. We're at KGMN FM 100.1 Super Country. Gets peak overlooking Kingman, Arizona. On our tower, we have a Jam Pro 3 bay antenna as the primary FM transmit antenna. At the very tip top is a Scala Paraflector 950 megahertz STL receive for studio to transmitter link. Uh, between the bottom two bays is our auxiliary transmit antenna for when the transmitter is on low power. And at the very bottom is a Scala Mini Flector that sends a signal to our booster in Oakman. This is our daily driver transmitter, which is now going to become backup service. It is the Harris FM1K. The Harris FM1K is a 1000 watt transmitter, but inside of it is the MX15 exciter that provides 10 watts. This is the tube that the transmitter uses. This transmitter speaks American and prefers iMac tubes. This one uses the 4CX1000A, which is rated for 1000 watts plate dissipation. We're currently up here trying to diagnose a power supply fault. Down here on the floor of the transmitter is the high voltage section, which creates 3000 volts up to 1 amp. This is the back of the MX15 exciter. Up here is the tube compartment where the 4CX1000 sits. Over here on the side is some overcurrent relays and some time delay circuitry. Uh, that's actually the bias supply shelf. This is the bias power supply which creates negative 25 to negative 40 volts. The glass tube in front is a three minute time delay. With the tube compartment open, we can see the 4CX1000 sitting in its socket. And then chimney for the airflow at top. These are the two plate blocking capacitors. So this white lead has DC 3000 volts coming down it. Then our 100.1 megahertz goes through the plate blocking capacitors and into the tank circuit. The top here is where the 3000 volts comes into the plate compartment. Then this loop here is the antenna coupling. Outside of the tube compartment is the coaxial sections to get the power out of the transmitter. At the bottom of the section is actually a shorted line stub to help with filtration. In the middle here are a couple of reflectometers for uh, monitoring power forward and power reverse, which is similar to what's at the top here. And this is what's known as a Jesus stick. So you ground the tube with that to make sure there isn't 3,000 volts on it before you try to take it out of the socket. This is the back of the front panel metering. Interesting design on this transmitter is that the plate current meter is actually in the high side power supply. So it has 3,000 volts on it. On top of the transmitter is the inch and five ace EIA flange output, and that feeds a low pass filter before going out the wall into the antenna. The legacy of the KGMN building is that at one point in time belonged to the Department of Energy Nevada, 
and was used by the Nevada test site as a net 12 site, which was a series of low band repeaters arranged about 100, no, actually, arranged 200 miles radius of the Nevada test site. Over here in the corner is our old telephone, which was a rural telephone operating on 450 megahertz. But when we discontinued service with our phone company, we understand we were the last people to actually use it. Over here is a rack of auxiliary equipment. We have the STL receiver at the top of the rack. Below that is an STL transmitter that sends our audio to our free run booster on Oatman. And then we have the Sign Systems Rack 1 and RP8, which handles the telemetry and automation of turning the transmitter on and off. So when we came up to the site, the main 240 breaker was tripped that feeds this transmitter. But I have a suspicion that our fuses went bad too. I'll give them a test. Sorry, doing this one-handed. Okay, that one's good. That one is open. Get another one in quick. And the price of the fuse is... 79 cents. Sorry for doing that off camera, I needed both hands, but new fuse is in place. Alright, so while we're in here, we're gonna try going to the other tube we have on hand, because this one's pretty much worn down to a nubbin. Get my trouble light in here for you. So, take your DC, your DC clamp just slides off. Loosen, loosen your hose clamp here. Lift this off, okay. So good thing you guys are along for the ride. So what happens in this particular model is that we will lose plate blocking capacitors and they basically explode like that. But it's okay, because I have plate blocking capacitors just for this reason. Yeah, 200 picofarads at 15,000 volts, by the way. All right, the new plate blocking capacitor is in, but the screw is not tight. We will tighten that once the anode clamp is on. To remove one of these tubes, give it a twist about a third of a turn. Fingers are now disengaged and we can lift out. Looking down into the socket, we have contacts for filament, cathode, and two grids. Okay. Sorry, this isn't really a one handed operation. It's a little loose, so we'll just give it a quick squeeze. There we go. And we'll tighten that guy down. Okay, so two back in place. One of the great mysteries of this transmitter design is up here in the front of the cavity is a 50 ohm resistor, which I believe is rated for like either 100 or 150 watts, something like that. But interestingly, it's not connected to anything. It just sits in there. So when I ask the question, hey, what about that little guy? Apparently that has to do with parasitic suppression in this type of design. Right, flip the breaker. Come around the front here. Start our filament. Fan has come on. Filament has come on. So tube is now heating up. 
see you in three minutes. Well, three minutes later, we tried turning her on, but it looks like we have a major problem in the plate high side voltage, and this is a dangerous situation because our plate voltage pegged about 5,000 volts, but it's slowly, slowly going down. So this tells me that the plate blocking, uh, the plate blocking inductor is probably open. Uh, that blocks the RF from going out the DC into the power supply. And also it looks like the plate uh, plate voltage dissipation resistor is shot. So, show you plate on real quick. So, notice how my meter pegged uh, with me giving typically when I give voltage into one of these tubes, it hovers at the 3000 volt mark. But dissipating very very slowly so uh, I'm probably not going to be able to get this running in this trip but it's okay because it's new transmitter day here at KGMN FM here is the rack for the new transmitter All right, new rack is installed. And we have some wiring to do in the electrical panel, but that will continue here in a bit. Well, snake bit again. Problem solved. All right, still a little more wiring left in the panel here, but we have the new 220 outlet installed for the transmitter. And before you go saying anything, this looks like it wants to be a 120, 20 amp circuit, but believe me, it is not because the position of the horizontal blade is actually reversed on the power cable we have. And wiring is now done. We will now reconnectorize the drop, going from EIA engine 5 ace flange to 7 16 din. Drop has been connectorized. Installing a 7 16 DIN to half inch super flex jumper. Should go across the room where the new transmitter will be installed in the new rack. The new Nautel VX1 transmitter built specifically for KGMM. So inside the box, you get a proof of performance sheet. Quick start guide, documentation on a thumb drive, ancillary box. Ooh, got some captive bolts and they give you ferrites for the power cord. Then under that is the transmitter itself. This little box does the same job that the big cabinet does. And this is it, the Nautel VX1. 40 years of transmitter evolution. This little 35 pound-ish or so two rack unit transmitter will make a thousand watts, doing the exact same job as our original Harris FM1K. This here is engineer Matt's brother, Paul. Hi. The new transmitter is installed in the rack. 98.1 what is this? All right, new transmitter installed, ready to transmit.
Well, as Joe would say, snake bit again. So we have our new transmitter. Go to transmit with it. And we go into power fold back. So, pretty much we're getting infinite VSWR off of the antenna, which indicates that we have a shot antenna. The city lights shimmer in the distance as a thousand points of light. Well, looks like water in the feed line. Don't let your friends know that you do this. All right, after a quick brain drain of the KGMN FM antenna system, moment of truth. Uh, 99, 100 watts forward, 0.65 watts reflected. We got a winner. We're going to run 670 watts to compensate for the antenna gain. Our ERP is 1000 watts total. As it turns out, this is not a touch screen. And look at that, we're already there. All right, we'll switch over the audio and set the cowbell. All right, cowbell has now been set. We are at 100% modulation or so. 670 watts and we are jamming.